Can everybody hear me okay? So today we're going to talk about starting and maintaining your own brokerage. All right. So I take it you all want to open your own brokerage firm today, right? Okay. A little bit of background about myself so you understand where I'm coming from. Um, I'm coming from the fintech industry, which is financial technology. Um, I've been doing this business for almost 19 years. Okay, I started from uh, working with brokers such as Easy Forex as a dealer, I'll setting up offices for Alpari, FXTM, I was a director at Saxo Bank, and now I moved over more or less to the financial technology side of it. On a daily basis, I work with people who want to open up their own brokerage. So we're going to go through a little checklist now and what they need to open up their own brokerage. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about the company because it's always good to know about the company before you get into business with anybody. Either you're opening up your own brokerage or even trading with a brokerage firm. What does it take? What does a brokerage need? Technology and services, schedules, and conversion and retention. All right. Uh, Leverit is a pure technology company, so there's no conflict of interest when people want to open up their own brokerage firm. It's been around since 2008. We have 130, over 130 brokers as our clients, either through the solution, front-end solution, either through liquidity or through feed. Basically, we give a full turnkey solution uh, for existing and new brokers. So what does a brokerage need? <clears throat> so let's look at a checklist. So if you want to open up a brokerage, first of all, you need incorporation and a license. Um, you have to decide if you want to be regulated, where you want to be regulated. All these things play a major role in when you're opening up a brokerage firm because it's the costs where you go into the capital requirements. So the capital requirements is two types of requirements, right? There's operating costs, okay, and there's um, costs basically for regulation, capital adequacy. So if I'm regulated from the FCA and I want to be A book or B book, okay, there, there's different capital requirements. Do you guys understand about A book and B book? It's good for you guys to understand because even if you're traders, you, have, you, you want to know if your broker is a market maker or is he an ECN broker, okay? A market maker basically makes the market. He inherits the risk. There is a conflict of interest. may not be a conflict of interest. You know, I want to say an ECM broker is basically transfers all the risks to his LPs, to his liquidity provider, so he doesn't inherit the, inherit the risk. So that means there's less slippage, there's less requotes, and so forth, right? Because ECM brokers, what they want to do is they want to increase the lifetime value of the particular client, right? They don't want them to lose. So they make their money off the volume. So the, the more you trade, the more money they make. So there's no manipulation there, right? You have to have a risk plan. You have to have a website, and your website should basically deeply, you know, show and represent what your company is all about. Typical staffing and KPIs. So we'll go into depth a little bit about each one. All right, your risk plan. We talked about A book and B book, okay? You want to see what your exposure is. If you're a B booker, you're going to have more exposure, okay? That means more risk, so you're going to have to have good risk management. If you're an A booker, when you're ECN or STP, basically you have less exposure, okay? Technology failures. You always have to have a disaster recovery plan, either with the technology provider or your broker you have in-house. Because if something happens overnight and your service would crash, for example, then you're in trouble. Because it only takes one slip up. And if you don't have a, a disaster recovery plan, then it could cause your brokerage. But when you're regulated as well, regulators also require you to have a disaster recovery plan. So when you know that a broker is regulated, you know he has a disaster recovery plan. Market risk. You should always have a good system to anticipate market risk. It's very difficult to anticipate market risk because nobody knows what really goes on in the market, right? So, for, for example, Black Swan Day with the, uh, with the Swiss franc, any unpredictable market movement, managing your exposure. So at Lever, we have a system called a risk management, which automates and alerts you beforehand of irregular spikes, irregular movement, widening of the spreads of what's going on in the market, so you can react accordingly. Let's face it, it's very difficult for the human eye as a dealer to basically catch everything that goes on in the market and to view all the exposure. If you don't have automations in place, you're already at risk. So this is your website, right? So this is an example. You want to build your brand. So when people come to me and say, I want to build my own company, 
one thing you have to do is you have to build your brand. You have to have brand recognition. I mean, look at the big major um, brokers right now. It, Saxo Bank, Alpari, they have brand recognition in the industry. So when you mention these people's names, for example, you know that you know they're a big brand, it's easier. So what you want to do is create brand recognition. So what we do at Leverate is we help you create websites, we, we give you tools and widgets that basically help clients trade, we have social networking, so we combine everything together, make it easier, we also help with um, payment solution providers and so forth, right? But these, these are the key factors that you have. So your website's gotta be responsive and interactive. It's also gotta be useful content, so you wanna have information there for your target audience that we're gonna get into a bit later. You want to basically have multiple banks and PSP providers because each country is different with different PSP providers. You want to be able to add them and so forth. Okay, um, uh, internal client terminal. So client terminals, basically, you want to make things easy for your clients. If they can log into your website and you can have a user ID and password so they can log into to view their trades or their platform, it's a lot easier to do from your, from your website as well and also from your platform, which we'll see later. All right, typical staffing you need. You need a chief dealer who's responsible of setting up and maintaining your, your, your dealing desk and uh, your risk and managing your exposure. Your sales basically do your retention, okay, and conversion. Uh, sorry, and retention that basically retain your clients. Now, keep in mind, when you open a brokerage firm, a lot of times, you guys are traders, right? The first time you deposit, you're not going to put in a large amount. You'll put in a small amount just to test the broker. You're going to test the broker's trading conditions. You're going to test the broker if, if you're making money and you want to withdraw. Is he going to actually withdraw, let you withdraw? Is he going to give you hassle? You want to test the broker out. The second time the, you, you want to fund, you're going to put larger amounts of money, right? So this is normal. This is like human nature and what we do that we want to test. So. You have your sales and then you have your retention because you want to increase the lifetime value. Marketing. Your marketing basically is responsible for bringing in traffic and generating leads. Okay? But your marketing also has a conversion ratio. All right? So I'm a big believer if you can't measure it, don't spend it. All right? So if my marketing guys are spending all the money and I can't measure the conversion or the return on my investment, then might as well not do it. All right. So we talked about... Um, your, your, your typical staffing. You have to set KPIs for, for everybody to measure, right? What is a KPI? It's a key performance indicator, okay? So conversion, effectiveness of sales team. What's your conversion ratio? Some people say the average conversion ratio for the FX industry in the beginning for a startup can be from, range from 3 to 7%. So you have to set these, these goals. Um, your CPA, what is your cost per acquisition? What is your cost per lead? This all affects your budget. So when you start a brokerage firm, you have an initial amount, initial capital that you invest. So you don't want that initial uh, equity to go low, right? To go in, in the negative. So you have to measure your CPA and your CPL. Okay, your reach. You want to you want to be able to reach multiple languages. You can't just seclude yourself to one area, right? And to do that, you also have must have support and platform support that reaches multiple languages. Marketing conversion ratio we talked about. Retention, lifetime value. You want to increase the lifetime value of your trader and your uh, trader experience. How do you do that? By calling your clients, by offering them services. Because at the end of the day, you want to be able to service your clients and keep them happy. When you have a longer lifetime value, you increase your volume. More volume, more capital for you. And then you increase your growth rate. Budget, you look at your ROI, cost of acquisition, cumulative cost of missing conversion, manage, managing risk effectively, and increasing revenues while decreasing costs, okay? Now remember these KPIs, right? Now, a lot of times people ask me, what do you need to do to, you know, how do you start? Well, first you have to have a plan, okay? You have to have a cost analysis. You should do projections for at least two years, right? What does that cost? I mean, what, what does that entail? You should say, that basically, this is how much money I'm going to invest, and this is how when I want to break even, and this is when I want to start making a profit, right? But this, these projections that you have for two years, okay, and these KPIs that you sent, you have to revisit them. So you have to monitor them. 
one month down the line, one quarter down the line, six months down the line, and see where am I going wrong as a broker? Where am I doing better? For example, if I'm spending 100000 in marketing on PPC, and I'm spending 10000 in offline marketing, and I'm bringing more money in offline marketing for 10000 I want to increase my offline marketing and decrease my PPC. If you don't have these down noted, okay, you won't know, you won't see them, right? So this is very important. Um, now you decided to launch and you want to get into the market and you decide which countries you want to tackle, for example. You, you need to know your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities and threats. The fact that you know all these about yourself and your company, you can better tackle the market and better understand how you can enter the market. You should also understand the clients that you're looking for, right? So there's different types of clients. There's retail clients, there's IBs and affiliates, there's fund managers and existing brokers. Now this doesn't mean that you're gonna tackle all these types of clients, right? But you have to prepare, all right? Now what are you gonna offer these clients? You're gonna offer them a downloadable version, web, mobile, tablet. This is what everybody asks for. You want social, you want interactive, you want multi-languages, you need liquidity, you need fee risk management systems, CRM and hosting, okay? How are you going to um, acquire these clients? Different channels, right? So you need direct relationships, which your sales will do. You work with referrals with IBs and affiliates, for example. Distributing partners like lawyers or financial institutions that can generate leads for you, but quality leads, because they're already in the midst of uh, opening a broker or becoming a client, and online. Okay, how you balance your budget according to this is all up to the KPIs that you allocated before. Okay, now marketing, industry events, own events, client meetings, online. Each broker is different, right? The type of clients that they want, the target audience that they want, they do different marketing. So depending on what type of broker that you are and depending where you want to be and where you want to go, you do different marketing. All right, I'm not gonna go into all of it, okay, but when you look at the retail and uh, clients, IBs, affiliates, fund managers, and existing brokers, they all need different things, okay? They all want to do different things. Retail clients need more social trading, retail clients need more attention, more um, retention as well. IBs and affiliates we refer clients to you, uh, they have a bigger network, they want CRMs, they want management systems to view their clients, they want rebates. Fund managers have a larger amount of client potential, high, higher net worth individuals. Uh, existing brokers want liquidity, they want feed and so forth. Now, we offer all that service, but we also when you're a broker, you can also offer that to this type, these type of clients as well. And also you have the average uh, FTDs, first time deposit per each one, per industry standard, right? So it's always good to understand your client. Some companies forget this, okay? And they're so caught up in the moment that they've grown and they've built and so forth, they forget to go back to the basics. And these are the basics. It's tailoring to the individual clients. Okay, now we're gonna go to the technology side of it. So now we understand that we wanna become a broker, we understand the client, we understand our KPIs, we've done a budget, so, so now we're ready to go. So now we've decided we, we need the technology. All right, at Leverett, one size fits all, that doesn't happen, right? Because each person coming in has a different model, has a different idea, so we offer different solutions as a technology company. We offer turnkey solutions, both front-end and back-end, and the third is liquidity, so there's three parts. Front-end is what your clients see, back-end is how you manage it, and the third part is the liquidity, all right? So we have from um, Cirix Social, Cirix Web, mobile and tablet that we offer to clients. We offer feed, liquidity. We also offer binary. We also offer regulation as well, where people can work under instant regulation that we can get into that more and, and how it works. All right, so let's look at the whole thing in one. So let's look at the front end. As we said, the front end basically has your interactive for traders, your social, your, your platform, uh, your social trading, your charting tools, your web, mobile, your tablet, whatever your traders see. And this is how it looks. So if I'm a broker right now, this is what I have. I have the full Cirix solution, the social, and, and all the features that social has in trading. So <clears throat> this is what my client will see. 
Okay, so the back end is basically you want to connect everything. You want to have feed. Okay, so we offer like 1,600 instruments and a feed dashboard where you can manage your feed. We also give you a risk management system that automates your trading, for example. So you want to uh, manage your risk in exposure, in currency, in individual traders. You can set automatic um, hedging strategies, manual hedging strategies, and so forth, right? And your CRM. So you want to manage your clients. So it's client relationship management. So you want to see what you, who are your, your leads coming in, who are your clients, what they're trading, when they came in, what they're looking for, and so forth. So your sales can call them up and then basically you know, offer them the services for your brokerage. Make sense? If you don't have a CRM, for example, that's effective, and if you don't have a risk management that's effective, that this could be detrimental to, you, to your business, basically. Liquidity. Okay, so we're connected to multiple tier one banks, okay? Multiple liquidity providers. What we do is, if you're a broker and you want liquidity or you're new and, uh, and you want to start a brokerage and you want liquidity, is we connect you to our tier one banks. Now, because we're not a broker, there's no minimum margin requirements to open the account. It's only the, the amount of what your clients are trading, right? Whereas if, if I was a broker and you come to me as a, a startup company, I'd require maybe 100,000 to half a million in margin requirements just to open the account. When you're a new broker, it's more difficult to open, uh, to go to LPs and, and, and open an account because it's very costly for you, all right? So we also offer what is called the BBO, gives best bid, best offer. So all our LPs are put into a pool and they actually like fight against each other, basically giving us the best price, the best bid, best offer, and then we give that directly to our clients. Okay, make sense? So we don't manipulate or mark up on the spread from our OPs. This is very important. All right, so streamline your solution. So this is basically combining both together. So I have my front end and then I have my back end, right? So if I was to get everything in pieces, okay, I become a vendor manager. So I'll get a different uh, a back office manager, I'll get a different API, I'll get a different feed, I get a different liquidity provider, I get different hosting, and so forth. So what happens? If something goes wrong in one of these parts of the puzzle, who are you going to blame and who are you going to call? That's the problem. With us, we keep everything in one place, in one solution, so we streamline it, and it's more cost effective. So if anything goes wrong, you call one person, right? So we manage everything for you. We give the, the back end, the CRM, the risk, the feed, the hosting. And the hosting that we have is actually done in the UK. Okay? And then we give the social trading and the MT4 manager, those who want the MT4 as well. All right. So what's the schedule for opening up a brokerage firm? All right. So we have a lot of time. First thing you do is you got to do your homework. You got to decide what kind of broker you want to be. You got to decide the capital that you're going to get into, how much you're willing to invest. If you don't have the money to invest, you want to maybe look at partners and so forth. So it's up to you. you you're going to decide what kind of broker you're going to be and where you're going to get the money. Okay? Um, you're going to research basically which solution you're going to get, how you're going to get the solution. Are you going to be A book or B book broker? Right? What, co what countries are you going to target? It's not good to say that I'm going to target multiple countries. Maybe target one or two countries or three countries. But if you say you're going to target the world, it's a little bit unrealistic to start off in the beginning. After you decided that, you get the platform, you get the solution that you want, and you start testing it, right? You set everything, you put everything in order. And then number three, in the third month, um, you test the platform, you train your employees, you train your employees on your website, on your platform, you make sure they know everything that's going on within the company. And in the fourth month, showtime. Basically, you start your marketing campaigns, you launch everything, and then you start running your, corporate, your business. Then you, you see next opportunities for growth. Should I open up a representative office somewhere else? Should I work with IBs more? Should I work with affiliates more? What should I pay them? What's my cost now? Am I making money or am I, am I on budget or not? So you start measuring everything. Make sense? All right. So as a technology provider, we also offer retention tools, right? Because we work with 130 brokers, right? We always get feedback from them saying, we want this, we want to add this, we want to do this, and so forth. So what we do is we come up with a retention tool, 
Okay? So we offer what is called the Cyric Social. You guys know what social trading is? Okay. It's basically your social trading is as good as as many social traders you have. We have 80,000 live social traders. Okay? Not demo social traders, live social traders. How do we get 80,000? It's basically all the brokers that we work with, their clients who are social traders must sign up for the social network if they want to follow or copy others. Okay? Now these are live social traders that basically you can see their maximum gain, their maximum drawdown, their PNL and so forth. Now the PNL on our social network is very good because on the sense of it also accounts for open positions. Now a lot of social trading doesn't, so it could be misleading. So if I'm 80% in profit, that also accounts for my open positions. If I'm 80% in profit and it doesn't, and my losing positions are 100% in loss, that affects my numbers. So it's very important to be transparent. So what we did is we got numbers from our existing brokers and we asked them, how does it help? So with social trading, you'll see that the average lifetime of a trader increased by 14%. Okay, average trading volumes by 55%. Trading value, 32%. Broker P&L, 40%. And average days traded, 47%. Right? So no matter what you add, either social or any other solution, there's always a percentage of market participants in it. So the fact that you get social trading, for example, you increase your market participation in clients that you have. Because one social trader could have 200 followers and 200 copiers at the same time. You are exposed to that as well. So that already increases your business and gives you a head start and an edge within the market. Now, Cyrix Active. How many of you guys understand what a workflow is? Okay. I'll tell you what a workflow is. A workflow is when you start a brokerage firm, in your CRM, you create a workflow. A workflow is if a client, if a lead comes into the website and then he clicks on this, he clicks on that, it's the lifetime from a lead to client journey, right? And what you do in between there is called the workflow. And now what your salespeople do, what your marketing people do, what your retention people do, that's how it works, right? What we did is we created a workflow on the actual platform. So when a client trades or a lead trades, on the platform, you get push notifications to your CRM. So instead of calling someone who went to your website and just clicked on a link just to call them up, whereas you can go and say, okay, you did a trade, you're trading oil, you can talk to them, call them up and talk to them about the oil. Or you place multiple trades, or you won trades, or you lost trades. So it's a call for action, right? So just imagine if you have a position, you, you copied someone, you get a push notification to yourself and to the lead and to the client as well. So that helps in conversion and retention. So remember the KPIs that we talked about before? This helps decrease the CPA and the CPL and so forth. So this adds to the KPIs. So what the whole pro, pro, um, the purpose of this is to decrease your marketing and your expenditure and increase your ROI. So this is the point for this. So this is what other brokers now are doing so they can increase their retention and their sales. That's it. You guys have any questions? How many of you have traders? Technical, fundamental? IBs? Affiliates? All right. I'm sorry? How we make revenue? We make revenue based on volume. So we just basically, we don't charge on the volume, uh, we don't mark up on the spreads, we just charge a, a, a volume processing fee, okay? Because we don't want to manipulate the spreads, right? Because at the end of the day, the broker who gets the raw spreads from, the, from our liquidity providers, we want him to decide how he wants to mark up. Of course, he has to incorporate the, the markup that we do on the, on, on the processing. He incorporates that within his spread. That's how Lever makes money, was one of the questions. Anything else? Sorry? Yeah. We have MT4 and Cyrix. Okay, Cyrix is a proprietary platform of Leverit. Okay, it's, uh, it's Cyrix web, mobile, uh, downloadable version, and social trading. 
And then we also we also provide MT4 for those who want to use MT4. So basically, you have MT4 if you want, Cirix, web, mobile, tablet, downloadable version, and social. So you have seven front ends that you can give to your clients. Not all of them would use all of it, but you have the, per the percentage of the market that will do. So you have that clientele. 130, yeah. A little bit more. I'm sorry? No, the platform stays the same. You have to you have to understand, we give the front end and the back end, right? So we're the tech. But how you manage the back end as a broker is totally up to them. Now, if they want to give slippage, if they want to do requotes, it's up to them. So the, remember, the broker controls the the feel and trade for a trader, right? We provide the technology. How you manage it and you use it, it's up to you. Yeah. Sorry, say that again. All the different brokers use Cirix. Yeah. All they use pools for social. They use pools for social? If you sign up as a broker, yeah. there's the social platform. Have you got access to all the other brokers? Yes. Okay, this is very important. If you have access to the other social traders, you do. So if you're a broker, you already have automatically 80,000 social traders there. The difference is, is you cannot communicate with one another. This is very important, right? You can't text one another. You, you know, all you need to know about the social trader is basically his performance. What his performance is, what he actually trades, his P&L, how long he's been trading, his maximum gain, his maximum drawdown. Because a lot of the times when you communicate with other traders, okay, they could be IBs, they could be affiliates, and they could actually steal from other brokers. So what we do is we don't allow that to happen, right? There's no chat rooms, there's no saying where do you trade or come trade with me and so forth like that. All you need is to be transparent and see what he trades. There's no no need for chatting. So but brokers like that for startup brokers well because they feel secure for their clients. Sorry, go ahead. If you if you get this solution, so so basically how it works is you you get the Cirix right and you use your colors and your logo. That's it. Yeah. Yeah yeah. You, okay. And the mobile app as well. You get your own native app. What does that mean? When your clients go to download the native app, they don't see who else has Cirix. You give them a link only to your broker. So you if you're XYZ broker, your mobile app is only XYZ broker. You won't see the other brokers. Whereas other companies, you can see a drop down of everybody who has it, which could be a disadvantage for some brokers, right? I'm sorry, the customization? Colors and logo, yeah, okay? Because the, the, the good thing about that is it's familiar to everybody, right? So you don't want to keep changing it. And then because they're familiar with it and because a lot of people use Cirix as well, they want to know that it's actually Cirix, right? The same thing with the MT4. You can't really customize it and all that. But you understand the reason why, right? It the, the cost for the it depends on the solution you get, right? Because we remember when I said that there's different types of solution. Well, there's different types of solutions that where you can get the Cirex, where you can get the MT4 together, or you can just get, you know. The liquidity, you get the BX8, or you can get it under our license. It just varies. If you're interested, we can talk about it later. Yeah? Any other questions? How many of you are thinking of starting up a brokerage? Yeah, there you go. All right. Thank you very much.